In this lecture we are going to complete our discussion of molecular orbital theory of H2 plus dihydrogen cation. So far we have written down the Hamiltonian and the reason why you are working with H2 plus as we have said several times already is that it is a unique case of a one electron molecule. So, here we have minus H cross square by 2 m e del square that is a kinetic energy term of this lone electron minus q e square by r a minus q e square by r b these are the potential energy terms for the attraction of this electron by the two nuclei and q e square by capital R where capital R is the internuclear separation is the term in the Hamiltonian operator for uh, internuclear repulsion. So, we have formulated Schrodinger equation this way and we have said that uh, we are going to construct the molecular orbital not by solving Schrodinger equation directly even though it is possible we are going to construct it by a uh, rather unique technique by taking a linear combination of atomic orbitals. And when we do that this is where we are we made a little bit of progress identified a uh, something called an overlap integral integral 1 s a 1 s b over all space and uh, we have got two wave functions psi 1 this is the bonding orbital 1 by root over 2 plus 2 s multiplied by 1 s a plus 1 s b and psi 2 1 by root over 2 minus 2 s 1 s a minus 1 s b. These are the contour diagrams and these are the profiles that you take through this two and from these we have said that it is quite obvious that in this case in the upper case that is where you have a build up of electron density between the two nuclei that is going to lead to stabilization and here you have a depletion of electron density if you take square of this uh, between A and B that is going to increase uh, that is going to contribute to increased internuclear repulsion. So, this will be a higher energetic state. So, this here is called bonding situation bonding lowers energy and this here is called anti bonding situation anti bonding orbital why because there is an increase in energy compared to isolated atoms. If there was no change in energy we would have called it non bonding orbital. Now, since these wave functions are not uh, Eigen functions of this Hamiltonian operator that we have written the best we can do is try to work out the uh, expectation values or average values of energies using psi 1 and psi 2 that is what we are going to do in this module right. So, let me write the expression like this E 1 is equal to integral psi 1 h psi 1 over all space. So, if we expand this and again uh, the way to do this is once I write this please stop the video do the expansion yourself it is elementary and then when you reach a point where you get some uh, strange looking uh, quantities then you should turn the video back on ok. So, this is what we have we have replaced psi 1 by 1 by root over 2 plus 2 s multiplied by 1 s a plus 1 s b in the bra vector as well as the ket vector. Of course, I can take the constants out and I will get 1 by 2 plus 2 s outside. So, that is sorted inside we have this wave function h hat wave function integrated over all space expand it you are going to get 4 terms integral phi 1 s a h hat phi 1 s a plus phi 1 s b h hat phi 1 s b plus phi 1 s a h hat phi 1 s b plus phi 1 s b h hat phi 1 s a. And now we have to expand these terms and write them in uh, some way that we can understand. Similarly, we can write an expression for E 2 the only difference between E 1 and E 2 is that for the last two terms in E 2 the signs are negative whereas uh, the signs are positive for uh, all terms for E 1 that is the only difference terms are actually all the same. All right, so, let us try to evaluate this one by one slowly this is where we are right now we have got the wave function we have got an expression for the expectation values of energy for bonding as well as anti bonding situation. Let us work with the uh, energy of the bonding orbital and let us try to expand this a little bit while doing that since we do not know what these uh, integrals are we are going to define them we are going to give them some name that is the best we can do at the moment because see uh, as I said 1 s a is not really eigenfunction of h hat 
So, you cannot just write E uh, 0 and bring it out that is not going to work. So, what we say is whenever we have the same orbital before and after in the bra vector and cat vector we call that integral H i i or H j j both are actually the same. It does not matter because both are 1 s orbitals. When we have say 1 s a in the bra vector and 1 s b in the cat vector or the other way around we call it H i j. Now, H i j is equal to H j i that comes from the property uh, of the Hermitian operators. There is something called turnover rule where if you have something like integral phi 1 h phi 2 you might as well write integral phi 2 h phi 1 does not matter it is all the same. For this course we are going to take it axiomatically. And the last thing that we know already is the overlap integral that in any case is very easy to understand. So, we are going to write the expression for energy in terms of these integrals now. What is the first one? Integral phi 1 s a h hat phi 1 s a that is h a a right or h 1 1 or h i i whatever we, we want to call it. What about the second one that is also going to be h i i because we have the same 1 s b in the bra vector and cat vector. The last two terms are going to be h i j or h 1 2 or h a b whatever we want to call it uh, because uh, there we have if we have a in the bra vector we have b in the cat vector if we have b in the bra vector we have a in the cat vector. So, uh, this is what we get. Two in the numerator and 2 in the denominator cancel each other you are left with this expression h i i plus h i j divided by 1 plus s i j. And I hope it is not very difficult to understand that for E 2 uh, we will get more or less the same expression except for the fact that instead of plus sign we are going to get minus sign. Okay? Uh, please work it out yourself and satisfy yourself that that is the case. What is the next task at hand? We should try to evaluate h i i and h i j. We should try to simplify their expressions in terms of some things that we know. So, let us do that. To evaluate it uh, we will write down the expression for the Hamiltonian. Now, when I do that I can take these first two terms in bracket. What is it? Is not it essentially a 1 electron Hamiltonian? So, we are going to write it as h hat 1 electron. So, now our Hamiltonian h hat is equal to a 1 electron Hamiltonian minus q e square by r j plus q e square by capital R. And remember by bond Oppenheimer approximation this last term is essentially a constant. Okay. So, this is what it is. So, h i i is equal to uh, integral phi 1 s i h hat phi 1 s i we are going to put this expression for the Hamiltonian in the expression for h i i and obviously we will get 3 terms in that case. We will get a sum of 3 integrals these are what they are. Let me just write it like this we will need some space to uh, write more things as well. h i i turns out to be integral 1 s i here instead of a and b I am just writing i and j more general coefficient uh, more general notations 1 s i h hat 1 e 1 s i. Now, this is something nice remember this phi 1 s is a 1 s orbital and what is the 1 electron Hamiltonian uh, 1 s uh, the 1 s orbital is going to be an Eigen function of 1 electron Hamiltonian. So, energy of 1 s orbital is actually going to come out. So, this first one is very uh, simple to work out. What about the second one? What about the third one? We will see even in the second one you can see that 1 by r is constant. So, that can come out third one well that is more interesting. Okay. So, this is how we write it now first we take this constant out it becomes q e square divided by r integral phi s i phi s i. Now, we know that that is equal to 1 we are working with normalized s orbitals that is great. Now, what we do not know is uh, the third one first one I already said I do not know why I have not written it yet, but it will come also uh, in the first one I think you can understand what will happen energy of 1 s orbital is going to come out inside you are going to be left with integral 1 s and 1 s which is going to be 1 and uh, so this will simply become the first term will simply become energy of a 1 s orbital. Second term is q e square multiplied by well uh, capital S. No, uh, just q square by capital R, no capital S. Third term is minus q square multiplied by phi 1 s i 
phi 1 s j divided by r j. What is this? This is called a uh, an integral j the name is Coulomb integral. When you say Coulomb what do you think? Which field of physics uh, would you think of if I took the name of Coulomb? Electrostatics right? So, this Coulomb integral has got to do with electrostatics as well. We encountered the same integral when uh, we do a valence bond uh, theoretical treatment of dihydrogen as well. Same Coulomb integral appears in molecular orbital theory and it has some physical meaning. See what do I have in the numerator? I have 1s square phi 1s square inside the integral I essentially have phi 1 s square I will write i also and here it is r j. So, if I draw it like this, this is the 1 s orbital I am talking about if this is i and the distance I am talking about is this r j right. So, what is this? If I just multiply it by electronic charge that gives me charge of this electron cloud ok this square is your essentially your probability density. Probability density multiplied by charge gives you charge density. So, uh, in the numerator if you just multiply by E which is just a constant that is a measure of that is your charge density. So, we have a charge density at a separation of R j from the second nucleus. So, this essentially then gives me well one term gives me for a particular value of rj the uh, potential for electrostatic attraction between the second nucleus and the uh, electron cloud around the first nucleus ok. Similar treatment is encountered if you want to talk about say uh, electrolyte solutions. In electrolyte solutions what we do is we take say a positive ion cation and we take a the ionic atmosphere to be a delocalized negative charge to keep charge balance. So, similar treatment is there as well you consider the electrostatic attraction between this point positive charge and this negatively charged cloud ionic atmosphere same thing here and you are integrating overall space. So, that will give you the total potential energy for electrostatic attraction between one nucleus and the electron charge cloud electron cloud on the near the other nucleus all right. So, it has a physical meaning J Coulomb integral talks about an electrostatic interaction ok. So, generally when we discuss valence bond theory we take a rain check on this uh, because it is easier to understand the expressions are simpler when I find it to be simpler when we write in molecular orbital theory ok. So, let us write the expression for H i i now the first term is E i E 1 s as we said second term is Q e square by capital R third term is minus Q e square j. Okay, very nice we got H i i already. Why do we want H i i? Because H i i appears in the expression for energies E 1 and E 2. What is the next integral? H i j. H i j is a little more interesting. Why? Because unlike H i i you have one s orbital in the bra vector a different s orbital in the ket vector and you might as well start guessing uh, what which quantity which integral we are going to encounter in a similar like that in, in a situation like this. So, this is your H i j again the first one there is no problem we still get uh, energy of 1 s orbital. Second one once again your 1 i 1 by r is a constant it comes out, but when 1 by r goes out what do you have inside the integral integral phi 1 s i phi 1 s j. I hope by now we all recognize this integral this integral is simply the overlap integral S i j as we are putting it here more often we just call it capital S. So, what is H i j first term we have no problem ah, I do not know why I have written it in so many steps anyway second term is Q e square by capital R integral phi S i phi S j third term is this integral uh, which is which looks somewhat similar to the Coulomb integral, but not exactly the same. We have one s orbital in the bra vector, we have another s orbital in the ket vector. Remember here R j is not a constant ok. So, how you evaluate uh, uh, these integrals we will come to that ok, but let us write this expression. The first one what happens is you take the energy 
of 1 s orbital out no problem with that. But inside you are going to have integral phi 1 s i phi 1 s j that is again your overlap integral. So, first one will be energy of 1 s orbital multiplied by overlap integral that is the difference between h i i and h i j. Second one also is q e square by capital R multiplied by s overlap integral uh, shows up in h i j it did not show up in h i i or h i j. Now, in the third term again we have an in, uh, integral which at the moment we do not know what to do with so we will give it a name it is since the earlier integral was called j we go alphabetically and we call this one capital K integral phi s i phi s j capital uh, phi s i phi s j divided by r j and there are textbooks in which they try to make sense of it, but I do not think it is a good idea. This is a purely quantum me mechanical quantity it is called an exchange integral or resonance integral. So, this is what your expression is it is very important to understand this is a purely quantum mechanical concept there is no classical analog. So, to say that when this electron is here the, that charge cloud interacting with the other nucleus and then when they change places that gives extra energy all this is uh, uh, trying to uh, extrapolate the classical logic too much into the quantum world you cannot do it beyond an extent. So, please understand that it is a purely quantum mechanical concept I uh, nobody knows to be honest any classical analog for this. So, let us not even try ok. So, we have the expression for h i j we have the expression for h i i what will I do I will now just put the expressions in uh, the expressions for e 1 and e 2 and here I am going to go fast because it is so easy. I uh, will just put everything in if you want you please pause and do it yourself please do it yourself then you will understand this is the expression for E 1 this is the expression for E 2. Now look at the expression what do we get E 1 s is the energy of an isolated 1 s orbital. What is Q e square by capital R you see this plus Q e square by capital R appears in both E 1 and E 2. So, that is essentially the internuclear repulsion between uh, A and B. So, no matter what you do that internuclear repulsion term will be there and depending on capital R it will be large or small. If it is very far away capital R is large this second term will be zero, close to 0 if it is very close to each other it will be very large, but it is going to increase. So, if I just consider the two terms the first two terms then I can draw like this this here is the energy of the 1 s orbitals both of these energies would increase to some value and this is going to be how much this difference will be q e square divided by capital R as you understand that this extent of destabilization is going to uh, change depending on what is the value of capital R. Now, we have something interesting the third term has a negative sign in both the cases, but here in the numerator we have j plus k and in the denom denominator also we have 1 plus s here in the numerator we have j minus k and in the denominator we have 1 minus s. Now, j k s these are integrals we have already shown how s varies and s is definitely something that depends strongly on capital R j and k can be evaluated not analytically, but numerically meaning uh, for different values of capital R you can just put in all the values and by brute force you can calculate what will be the, with what will that integral be by doing summation it is uh, not very difficult to do if you know a little bit of computer programming ok. This is where computer programming comes in big time in chemistry ok. Otherwise if you want to do it by hand it will take a lot of time. So, remember this we are going to go to the next slide but first remember that there is a destabilization with respect to the 1 s uh, energy of 1 s orbital anyway. Now, talking about j and k this is the expression for uh, this j as well as k. Uh, how do I work it out well this expression is given in Atkins book it is uh, given as a problem in Macquarie and Simon's book we are not going to go into it whoever wants to do it please do it uh, it is a good exercise, but when you work it out using elliptical coordinate and all you see actually both the functions have minimum. So, when you add j and k what happens wherever they go down 
they will reinforce each other and you are going to get a huge stabilization. I do not know why I have written plus minus here it is actually only minus ok. So, then uh, when they reinforce each other uh, you would get a dip and when you subtract k from j you get a positive going uh, shape alright. Uh, so, this is what you get for E plus or E 1 you have a function that goes through a minimum. This is the energy remember of the bonding orbital and here this is the energy of the anti bonding orbital which increases monotonically when you when you decrease capital R from infinity to a very small values. This position, uh, position or internuclear distance where you get an energy minimum for E1 that is the internuclear bond distance and uh, you can look at these insets. So, here this is a situation where the uh, two nuclei are very far apart from each other see what uh, the energy is and you can work out what S is. When they are at internuclear disk separation this is what the wave function would look like there is strong reinforcement ok. And uh, in case of the minus combination of the orbitals this is a situation when they are very far away it is still 0. When they are very close say when they are at this equilibrium bond length now you have this destructive uh, interference between the two wave functions and energy goes up to this value. And another point to note is that at equilibrium bond length stabilization of the bonding orbital is actually less in magnitude compared to the destabilization of the anti bonding orbital. You can uh, explain this qualitatively by talking about build up of electron density and depletion of electron density uh, between the two nuclei, but only qualitatively. Alright, so, these are the energies of H2 plus. Now, the way we uh, proceed now is that we can just fill in electrons if you have more uh, electrons here that is how you handle H2 and other diatomic molecules homonuclear diatomic molecules. But before that this is an executive summary of what we have learned so far and another thing that I want to say here is that uh, this is what happens when you talk about hydrogen. If you want to talk about homonuclear, homonuclear diatomics uh, like C2, N2, O2 and so on and so forth you might need to uh, you will need to invoke uh, the combination of not only 1s orbitals but also 2s orbitals, 2p orbitals and so on and so forth. You can do it in exactly the same way and you can generate orbitals uh, bonding and antibonding in this uh, way. Okay. So, I am going very quickly through this because it is not all that uh, difficult for you to figure out. One thing that I would like to point out is that uh, symmetry of these orbitals is uh, actually they have a role to play later on in many different things. So, let us note the symmetry and uh, let us note the symmetry using these uh, linear combination of p orbitals when there is pi bonding side on overlap this is the kind of contour diagram that you generate. See here we have plus sign and here we have minus sign right sign of wave function just right beside it plus and minus and here you have a node. So, if you start from any point of the wave function go through the center equal distance on the other side you get an a change in the sign of the wave function right. So, this is called anti-symmetric with respect to inversion and uh, the term for it is ungerade. So, these orbitals these uh, molecular orbitals come with the subscript u. So, this is called pi u orbital you can neglect this one for now. What does this orbital look like when we combine this 1s and 1s the contour diagram would be something like this. Now, see it is plus everywhere right. So, if you go from one any point through the center equal distance to the other side you would get no inversion uh, at all no change in sin of wave function. So, this is called a sigma g wave function g for gerade. Gerade and ungerade are German words well gerade means symmetric ungerade means symmetric as far as we are concerned. Now, what about the uh, anti bonding orbital for the uh, H 2 plus there we take something like this you have depletion. So, you have a node in between right this is the node. So, here the wave function is plus here it is minus start from any point go through the center equal distance on the other side you have inversion. So, this is called 
sigma u. Well for now let us say that this is sigma because it is sigma interaction and this one here is pi because you have pi interaction. There is more to it, it comes from the symmetry notations, we will not get into that in this course. But this is what we get for sigma interaction involving s orbitals, this is what we get for pi interaction involving p orbitals. So, the bonding orbital here, so uh, for sigma interaction involving 1s orbitals, the bonding orbital has z asymmetry, the antibonding orbital has unz asymmetry. For pi bonding with uh, p orbitals, the bonding orbital actually is unzade and antibonding orbital you see this is plus, this is minus, this is plus, this is minus. So, antibonding orbital is actually zade pi g and another thing that we often do is that for antibonding orbitals we put star. Okay. Different books use different notations, but this is the notation that is used most universally star for antibonding and zade and unzade to indicate whether they are symmetric or antisymmetric with respect to inversion. Right. So, this is in a nutshell the symmetry of orbitals that we just discussed. You can have different kinds of bonds sigma, pi and delta. Sigma is head on, pi is with p orbitals this is pi, with d orbitals this is pi. No, with d orbitals this is pi. Of course, I uh, do not have enough fingers to show you the uh, two lobes at the bottom as well for d orbitals, these are the two lobes at the top, this interaction is p interaction. So, once again s orbitals sigma interaction, no pi interaction possible, p orbitals sigma interaction, pi interaction, d orbitals well you can have sigma interaction also right, d orbitals you can have this kind of sigma interaction or maybe I should show this kind of sigma interaction, where is pi interaction? like this and this is delta interaction face on, head on, side on, face on. So, these are the different kinds of bonds. Uh, we will not discuss uh, the uh, symmetries of orbitals and all these in this course, but it is a good exercise for the students to work out by themselves. Now, what we have done so far is that we have uh, generated the alphabet by which we can discuss homonuclear diatomics in terms of molecular orbital theory. We have generated the molecular orbitals using the uh, single electron one electron molecule that is H2 plus. Next we are going to learn how we can fill in electrons into these same orbitals and how we can uh, develop a molecular orbital theory of dihydrogen.